Well, we are closing up for the second day of the British Musical Society's 50th birthday uh, celebrations, and um, I've got a wonderful guest with me in the top floor studio. Mr. Trevor Lee delivered a wonderful talk this afternoon about the Malt Cross in Nottingham, an abandoned old music hall that he's uh, known about for a long time that's come to life and has some wonderful resonances with Wilton's. How did you first come across the Malt Cross in Nottingham? In 1987, the... Uh, Nottingham Evening Post placed a picture of the Malt Cross as it was then. Uh, it had just been released from its former use, which was a warehouse, and uh, it was up for lease. And I realised as soon as I saw it that there was something that was worth looking you know, at again because of its worth as a music hall. And so I wrote to the Post and said, look, this is a gem, you know. People must come round and rally round. So two men actually put uh, up you know, their money and uh, developed the music hall again and uh, certainly opened it up as far as they could. It was rather limited because of their finance. However, they made a, a job of it um, to enable them to open it as a wine bar. Brilliant. I empathise with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. So, so they, um, they ran it uh, until such times as uh, it was so successful that I'm afraid the regulations at that time meant that they were just putting a few too many people in it. Um, we tried to do music <laughs> That's hall. not music hall at all. <laughs> no, it isn't, is it? But they, we tried to do music hall in there as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and Roy Hudd and, and various people, Joe Blake from the British Music Hall Society, um, Jeff Meller and people of that nature, and the Theatres Trust as well, oh, wrote in support of the building. Um, because I could get in touch with them, tell them about it. And so the licence was granted, and it ran very successfully, as I say, too successfully, really, um, but as a modern sort of disco-type atmosphere. I'm sure John Wilton would have approved. Uh, well, it certainly, you know, it certainly made, I think, anyway, they got some of their money back, if not all, or they would have loved to have kept it on. There was no reluctance on their part. After the licence was uh, revoked, it was left for a couple of years, until the Church's Trust in Nottingham decided that they wanted a place to uh, have a chaplain based in the city centre. And so in, the, uh, you know, in, in, the, in the, the future, they would have somewhere um, where this could take place. They then bought the building as it was, uh -huh. um, I as far as the architecture and everything had been altered, and they opened it as the Potter's House. Oh, and it ran as the Potter's House until in 1997, um, they applied for a huge 1.8 million, which doesn't go far, really, does it? No, not these days. On, on a building like that. But it's a grade two listed building, mm -hmm. and uh, the grant was, uh, was forthcoming, and so a total redevelopment of the music hall as it stood then took place. And so the building you go into now, and it was changed, the name was changed. Okay. The trust still maintained it, right. um, and it ran then as the Old Malt Cross, which was the original uh. name. Okay. And when it opened in 1887, uh, 1877, beg your pardon, um, it ran then as, uh, as I say, as a base where people could come and have, you know, sandwiches and just mm -hmm. similar to Wilton's in many, many ways. And now um, they've been granted an, or at least application for another grant, which means they can now extend below and beyond. The Newcastle Chambers, which is part of the complex, yes. built around the same time, uh -huh. is enabling them now to have performance space for creative arts. Wonderful. And please tell us a bit more about these basements. There are lots well, of hidden the, places the, yes, in this the, musical. Yes, there's been a restaurant since 1960 in the basement. The basement is unique in as much as it's an exact copy of what the architecture is above the floor level. And so the, the plan is, really, is to restore the basement mm -hmm. so that it looks identical to the original building, right. but not only that, to the building which now exists on the upper floor or on the ground floor, really, which is a balcony yes. and then the ground floor with a stage between the two, similar, very similar to Wilton's, a fairly yes. high stage, right. difficult yes. to work because you're not sure uh, whether yes, you're, where you're you know, looking about. playing to the gods or the... <laughs> Uh, but what have you, but it, it is necess you know, uh, a building which now has been restored, the floor has been restored back to its you know, original level, and so the light wells, which were a feature of that, um, are now exposed and will be able to be opened up. 
the, the biscuit really is taken when you look up at the barrel vaulted roof because that is unique, laminated boards. Um, I understand that one of the large stations, I'm not sure it's King's Cross or St Pancras, mm -hmm. has a very similar um, roof design. Right. And, okay. and I think there's a parallel there, except, you know, the Malt Cross is miniature to the, you know, to obviously the, the, the railway station. It sounds like a real hidden gem, a bit like Wilton's. I mean, I think it's fascinating that these few survivors of music halls, particularly with the Malt Cross, that they've been warehouses, we've yeah. been a warehouse, yeah. they've been places of worship or yeah. places that um, the church in some way has taken on to bring people together and yeah. to look after their communities, and now slowly coming to life again. Mm. But you know all about music halls because you founded something nearby that's how you knew well yes 35 years ago uh, we were both members uh, eric broomhead the, the other founder member both members of the british musical society mm -hmm. um, realized that we couldn't get to london to really be part of that so we decided to to form the local situation which was the derby and nottingham music hall association so it's run very successfully since then i've not always been as involved again as i am now uh -huh. um because other people have run it efficiently and excellently and kept it going but it's lucky they've got an expert on their doorstep though so that uh, the significance of the building was alerted early enough yes i think we can i think we can say that now you know they're at the stage they are um we can again support it in the way that we originally supported it um you know when the first uh, opportunity came along and the caves are very special um, yes tell us about these caves. Been, well there's a big cave system in in nottingham um, it's huge and it's a big it's a big tourist attraction and you can enter it in various places usually conducted tours with hard hats um, but when they they always knew the caves were there but because the restaurant was running they could never really get to it because it was you know it was leased to the restaurateurs anyway now uh, they're clearing all the this about 50 years of rubbish not not you know oh their glamour <laughs> Has, has been moved from the caves into the lower basement. It's now on its way out of the building altogether, and the caves are now being, you know, being really, you know, recognised as being just a gem as well as the, the, the music hall. Well, it's got a lot to offer. Now, anyone can go there currently, can't they? You can drop well, by, is that right? You can or? certainly drop by into the Malt Cross itself. It's certainly open every day. They do entertainment two, three times a week. Uh, there's a quiz night. And it is the sort of venue that, yes, is well used, um, but can always put in a few more. Absolutely. Well, I can't wait to visit it myself. I'm so excited to know that we've got a little sister down down the road and um, that people like yourselves are still looking after and helping us preserve our heritage this way. Um, Mr. Lee, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's just been a privilege to be here and to be able to talk about, you know, our little gem up there. Thank you. Good night. Good night.